All right, hello, how are you guys doing? This is Aldo Figueroa, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to save this panorama image as a JPEG and then send that JPEG into Illustrator to use the feature within Illustrator, which is tile printing. So you'll be able to print out this panorama image across multiple sheets of paper. So first things first, what I want to point out is that I am using Photoshop CS 5.1. Uh, all the things that I'm going to be working on will you will be able to do within the newer version of Photoshop, Photoshop CS6. I'm also going to be using Illustrator CS5 and the same thing applies with all the things that I'm going to be working on you can also do within Illustrator CS6. So let's go ahead and check out what we have right here. Here we have this panoramic image of in front of the broom library. There's a chalk art walk that was going on. Uh, what I want to do uh, this file has already been saved as a PSD with all the layers. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image. I'm going to go into Layer and tell it to flatten image. And what this does, it flattens all your layers onto one layer. Uh, one of the reasons that you'll want to do this is that just to, it, it helps make sure that this is the image that you're going to get. So. Uh, you could just go to, uh, to File, Save As and select JPEG. It does the same thing, but I just want to make sure. So I'm flattening everything. At this point, I'm not going to save because this will overwrite my PSD file. Uh, instead, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to File and tell it Save As. What Save As does, it makes a duplicate copy of this file and you just give it a new name. So this time, I'm going to go ahead and rename this to the Chalk Art Walk uh, Finished finished panorama. I'm going to change the format from Photoshop to JPEG. I want to make sure that it's saved in the location where I know it's going to be at in my week 03 file and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to save. It's going to bring up this window uh, for JPEG options. One of the f uh, f features of a JPEG is that it's able to create a high quality file that is optimized to itself. So right now, I want to tell it to, you know what, give me a high quality file. It's going to make a slightly larger file size. 9.3 megabytes isn't that bad. If you go down to a, s a small file, the quality is going to be lower. Yes, it makes a small file, but it's also going to create lots of JPEG compression, heavy artifacts, which I do not want. I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. And great, this file has now been saved as a JPEG file. The next step that I'm going to do, I'm going to switch into Illustrator and I'm going to create a document that's going to fit this file. But before I do that, I need to make sure, I need to check to see what my image size is. I want to set up the print resolution. For this panorama, I've decided that I want to make sure that the lesser of the two lengths, in this case being the height, is going to be at least 8 inches. So I'm going to create uh, if this was different, I could change the setting right here. I made sure that resample image is turned off. By doing so, I'm not affecting my pixel dimension. This is going to stay the same. I'm just changing the output, which is the print size. So right now, with a height of 8 inches, I'm able to print a 37 point, uh, point 0.2. You could just round this up. 37.2 point uh, inches uh, wide. The resolution is going to be 238, uh, which is going to be sufficient. I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. Now, before, I just want to mention, uh, depending who you talk to, depending what you read, uh, resolution, some people say don't go below 300. Others don't go below 150. I've even heard people that say don't go below 100. Uh, I personally don't like to go below 150. I still get a high quality image, it still looks great, uh, but it still gives me good results. Uh, so 300 would be ideal, but I'm going to go ahead and 238 will be fine. I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK because I'm going to need to note that number. I'm going to switch to Illustrate. I'm going to use a shortcut by pressing Command Tab on my Mac. Let's go into Adobe Illustrator. Great. I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to go ahead and tell it File, New, and within here I'm going to create a document that's going to be already sized up for my 
uh, document that my panorama and you can see I already created it before so it already has these settings in here otherwise I'll just change this information here so the width 37.19 inches height 8 inches great go ahead and select OK and here is my document this rectangle represents the artboard you could think of this as your canvas so I'm gonna go ahead and place that image that I just created within Photoshop the JPEG version of my panorama I want to place that into Illustrator so I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna select place I'm not gonna tell it open I'm gonna tell it to place because I want to place a file into this uh, Illustrator document so I need to navigate to where my file is at and here is my chalk art walk finish panorama JPEG I'm gonna select it down here at the bottom you have an option of linking your image and what that does it makes a reference to your image uh, the benefits of this is that any times you make a change to your original image and you save it those changes will be updated in this uh, file otherwise if you do not have link turned on if you have it turned off it's going to copy this file into this illustrator document I'm gonna go ahead and link this file it'll create a small file document also of note since this is a reference if you rename or move or delete this file um, if it's been changed when you open up the file within illustrator that's linked it will give you uh, a warning an error message saying that it cannot locate your file it'll give you options on how to relink it but I'm gonna link it for right now I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to place and great it has placed my image exactly within my artboard so what I'm going to do now I need to save my file let's go to file I can tell it save or you could tell it save or save as the, initial, the first time because we haven't saved it so I'm going to tell it save select a location and I'm going to go ahead and give this a name the chalk art walk panel the format is going to be Adobe Illustrator which is going to be the .ai format and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to save this saves my file now within here we do get this window and this window is to help you save your your files and it gives you the option to save it into an older version of Illustrator if you're working with an older version at home or somewhere else uh, you'd want to save it in one of these older formats so that it will have greater file compatibility otherwise if you know that you're only only going to be working with your current version just select that I'm gonna leave these options as is and tell it to OK so now my file is being saved once my file is saved great we're gonna set our print settings so now I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna select print one of the things that Illustrator is able to do it is able to print across multiple sheets of paper which is called tile printing so we're gonna set up our settings to do so first you would want to make sure that you have your printer selected so right now my printer I have an HP PhotoSmart C4700 series copies only want one copy I do not want to ignore the artboard for the media size I want to tell this to use the paper that I, that I have which is US letter if you have a different size paper maybe you have this nice quality uh, 8 by 10 photo paper you'd want to make sure that you select the select paper here I have it 8 by 10 uh, but there's lots of different types of papers depending on the type of printer so on and so forth uh, but I would just want to set up right now for US letter I'm going to uncheck this auto rotate because I don't want it to automatically rotate now here let's take a moment to examine this window over here uh, the preview window on the left hand side if you notice there's this little rectangular dotted line the area within this dotted line is a printable area the area outside is a non printable area that's very important to note because what we're going to do since we're going to tile print this we want to make sure that there's an overlap so here let's go ahead uh, within the options here I'm gonna tell it to tile and right now it's set to full pages 
with full pages, it's hard to see, but between each one of these sheets, you can see that it will, this panorama, which is 8 inches by 37.2 uh, inches uh, long, will print across five sheets of paper. But between each of these sheets of paper, there would be a white gap. So I want to change that. I'm going to go ahead and create an overlap of at least half an inch. Again, it's hard to see, but now what we have this area in between these two sheets of paper will be printed on each sheet of paper. So when you print them out, you'll have to then line them up. They'll stack on top of another of each other. Now there is this other option within here which is print imageable areas. I'm not going to select this option. The reason I'm not going to select this option is because it relies on your printer making exact printed edges. I've had hit or miss results with this. Instead I prefer to do full pages with a half inch overlap. I'm not going to scale this so I'm going to leave it as is. So now that I have these settings set up, I could see that it will print across my five sheets of paper depending on how long your document is. I try to conserve sheets of paper. Uh, right here within the media size, you can switch this around. And look, if I were to print it out across this area, I could save one sheet of paper and print across four as opposed to five. Great, I'd rather do four. Now, with these settings set, you have options down here. If you tell it to cancel, don't press cancel because cancel will just cancel out all of our settings that we've just done and reset it to the default. I'm not going to press print right now because I don't have my printer connected. Um, but if I did, I could set print. The other option, done, what this does, this will save your settings, close this window, and once you're ready, you can go back to file and tell it print and your settings are here waiting for you to press this glowing print button. So at this point you'll press print and what you'll get uh, your printer will print out across multiple sheets of paper. What you're going to get on those sheets of paper is this little overlap, a white border. My suggestion to you is use an X-Acto knife, use a metal ruler, uh, use uh, and, uh, a self a healing cutting board or something that will protect your cutting surface and make these nice straight cuts. You will have to create some overlap between them but that's okay. You can use either double sided tape or a glue stick whichever you're better at to connect these. Do not use Elmer's uh, glue. Uh, it's too wet and it's just really bad for something like this. But that's how you print. Alright, I hope you find this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, send me an email. Uh, I'll have my information listed there or post me a note. Otherwise, I hope uh, you're able to find this beneficial and good luck tile printing. Um, oh yeah, also I should note, this tile method is not restricted to panoramas. It's for any image that you want to print out across multiple sheets of paper. All right, so oh, go forth and create. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.